Uh, thank you all for being here today. Our uh, presentation is titled Device Management and Delta Update for Embedded Devices Using SW Update and TAF. So before diving into the detail, uh, let me introduce myself quickly. So my name is Koshiro Onuki, and I have been working as a software engineer at Toshiba Corporation. And so the new topic is I uh, recently joined uh, the CIP Software Working Group. So <clears throat> first, I'd like to quickly introduce the CBD Infrastructure Platform, or CIP, project. So CIP aims to establish an open source base layer of industrial grade software to enable the use and implementation of software building <coughs> a blocks for CBD infrastructure storage systems. So a key challenge are as follows. And to address these, we have several working groups, such as software working group or CIP cores. So I'm glad to be a part of security uh, software working group. So uh, let's start the presentation. So then we have eight main topics to cover today. Uh, we will start with some general information with introduction. And then we will dive into a uh, data update and uh, device management. We will see the demo action to show how everything works. And finally, we'll end with a uh, conclusion. Yes, let's start. So now let's take a, talk about the security challenges in embedded devices faced today. So as devices become more complex, uh, the risk of vulnerabilities and attacks increase. Uh, the, this means that we need more advanced security measures. Uh, there are three key challenges. First is safety of boot process. Uh, if attackers manage to run an authorized bootloader or firmware, uh, uh, they may take control of the device. Next is software tampering. Uh, supply chain attacks compromising the build process can lead to an authority software may be executed. Finally, uh, there, there are un unknown vulnerabilities. So attacker exploiting uh, undiscovered vulnerabilities can lead to a uh, successful attack. So to actively address the key security challenges, CAP has already three main areas. So first in secure boot. So device can start up only with a bad fashion software uh, if a good guard is used to enable this. And second, uh, repeaters to build are uh, used to maintain transparency and consistency in software images. Reduce the risk of tempering or uh, errors during the boot process. Uh, lastly, a software update and a update to quickly address new vulnerabilities. In this presentation, we will focus on improve the software updates. So both in CIP and in my project in our company, uh, we primarily use SW Update. So in this section, I'll provide the brief overview of SW Update. So SW Update is highly suited for embedded devices offering the key advantages. So the device uh, SW Update is proving in a lot of real world products, make it a trusted solution for secure update in embedded devices. So we chose uh, SW Update. So let's review the basic information on updates with SW Update. <coughs> for the update, the device used a SW file that consists of three main parts. The root file system or root FS, uh, unified kernel images, UKI, and SW description file. Uh, the UKI uh, includes the EFS job, kernel, command line, and into RLD, uh, and works well with secure boot. Then <coughs> the root file system consists of file system, and this is uh, completely replaced uh, during the update. And the SW description consists of information about UKI and the root file system. 
uh, such as size, uh, hash value, and instruction and how to install them. So the SW description is signed to create it to SW description dot seed. So uh, which is used to verify the root file system and UKI. Of course, this SW update file is not only possible structure, uh, but it is uh, is this one we are using. And once the SW update <coughs> file is created uh, by build system, it's uploaded to the artifact server. And to enable AB update, uh, the device is set up with two partitions, like like A. Like B, and both uh, UKI and root file system have uh, two partitions. Uh, let's focus on how the AB operating process works. So now the system running from the partition A. So our it's not good. So this uh, partition A. And the operating process can be summarized into four main actions. So first, the device takes available updates by accessing the artifact server. Once update is found, uh, the SW, update, uh, SW file is downloaded to the server, uh, device. After downloading uh, the device, verify uh, the SW file using SW description. And once verification is complete, the update is installed on the partition B. After the install, install is finished, the device will switch to partition B on the next reboot. If any issue occur in partition B, the system can easily roll back to partition A. So we use AB update. And now let's consider partition atta uh, potential attacks on this update workflow. So please take a look at this table. And it summarizes the resistance against seven types of attacks. When no measure are taken, uh, or attack is success, and uh, when using SW description, yeah, this is. So SW update provides a level of security, but unfortunately, uh, it is still vulnerability to several attacks. So especially, it cannot freely protect against the durability attack the flashes attack and key compromise. So, however, with tough, this vulnerability can be reduced. For more on these attacks method, uh, I presented at last year's OSS Japan. So, full details are available on YouTube. Link this below. So, in next section, I'll provide a brief of overview of tough. So. Let me introduce the Update Work Framework, or TAF. So TAF is a framework to enhance the security of update process. It focuses on three main goals. Strengthening security for both existing and new systems. Adapting to various system requirements, allowing flexibility. Even if a key is compromised, it can be replaced, reduce the risk of key leakage. So TAF also for three security de design principle. Uh, it showed, in short, uh, it makes existing update process more secure. So yeah, now let's take a look at how the update flow changes with using TAF. So when using TAF, process for detecting and verifying update has been changed and become more secure. Uh, it's important to know that uh, before the update process begins, make must be created in advance, like this, the data created like this. So build system puts the uh, SW files information to the metadata server, and the metadata server created the metadata, like this. And there are four main steps, as same as uh, standard update flow process. So first, the device refresh the metadata and check for available update using metadata. This is a detection process. So once update is detected, uh, <coughs> so, uh, the device downloaded it from the artifact server. 
And next is the system user metadata to verify the SW file. And finally, update, install, and apply the system. Uh, this is our architecture with it using TAF. Okay, next. Okay, now let's look at some challenges that come up with uh, when using TAF with SW update and how we can deal with them. So, one of the key challenges is a full download. So, when using TAF, the whole image must be downloaded for verification by comparing its size and hash value, like this figure. We need to compare hashes and lengths. So this process can be particularly uh, challenging for devices with limited resources, such as low storage or uh, memory capacity. So to get around this, uh, reducing the size of image is crucial. Uh, fortunately, SW update already support Delta update, which only downloads the differences between the current version and new version. This allows us to avoid downloading the entire images and helps cut down uh, the bandwidth and the time need for updates. Yeah, it's a benefit. Uh, combining the top with Delta update lets us keep updates secure and efficient even on devices with limited resources. Yeah. And in this section, I'll provide a brief of uh, Delta updates. So, but at first, let's talk about the size of update images and how it impacts the system or devices, especially when using root file system. So, when new package are uh, added, uh, several parts of root file system are updated as shown in figure six. And for example, version one is Debian-based root file system. And in version two is we added uh, Python 3.13 along with uh, yeah, associated packages, uh, totaling about uh, 20 megabytes. Yeah. However, because we are using AB update, the actual update size become quite large. So in this case, in this scenario, the total size is around 550 megabytes. So the example shows how small change in the root file system can lead to large overall updates. So I mentioned earlier, uh, this issue can be resolved with dirt updates. So SW update uh, already supported to different and their update method I already mentioned. So libsync, we call rdiv, and zchenk. Each has its own advantages and trade-offs. So rdiv is a library for generating offline data files, uh, meaning there is no need for server preparation and CPU processing on device. On the other hand, uh, zchenk allows downloading only the differences between new and old files, offering flex flexibility. Uh, however, it requires an online environment, a server preparation, and CPU processing for generating actual layered file with the server. So to make it clear, let's refer to a simple diagram like this. So in this diagram, I'll diff simply pull the data from the artifact server. A way as a jet chunk require compiling with the their devices root file system to download the differences. In other words, our diff provides a predictable site in advance, uh, making it possible to generate metadata with stuff. Yeah. On the other hand, jet chunk's size is unpredictable. So, which prevent us from creating metadata in advance. Therefore, we have chosen to use our diff. Uh, and let's quickly review on file size. Look at actual SW file size. And yeah, our diff is around 35 megabytes. Uh, with whereas Z chunk is approximately uh, the, uh, about 80 megabytes. Uh, however, uh, since Jet Chunk downloaded 
while comparing the download, the size end up at about 39 megabytes. Uh, this is a simple case, but uh, Delta updates are generally much smaller than full updates. So as shown in the diagram, I'll lift back by comparing the current version, version 1, and with the target version, version 2, and then generate uh, Delta images like this, and that get applied to the device. This, yeah. So tracking update success is crucial and essential. After an updating, confirming the version changes is crucial to determine if the update success or not. In other words, uh, knowing the current version is essential for creating the Delta images. To meet these needs, we've implemented two requirement features. First, uh, uh, we monitor the status during the update using WFX, which allow us to observe the update process. Second, uh, we track the root file system version on each device, ensuring we always know the running version on the each devices. So I try, yeah, let me introduce you to WFX. A WFX is a lightweight general purpose workflow engine. It executes workflow at job and manages their status. SW Update already supports the device artifact update workflow, we call DAO workflow, uh, which is specially designed for uh, updating embedded devices. This workflow uh, takes a task to coordinate with uh, devices. Yeah. However, in our scenario, uh, we will not be using the DAO workflow because it is overlapped uh, with Tuff's update detection process. So instead, uh, WFX will assist us by managing job execution and status update through the update process. So now let's look at how the update flow changes when we bring WFX into our update process. This is to summarize the actual status transition. So start with new, followed by downloaded, install, and success or failed. The status is updated according to this transition sequence. Uh, one of the main differences when using WFX is how it manages job execution and status updates. Here is how the workflow. Now first, uh, update uh, detecting using metadata, just like uh, in a standard workflow. And then we get the job using the device ID and like this. And after that, the device download an uh, SW file. Uh, through this process, WFX updates the status as downloaded. The next step is verify using uh, metadata. And once verified, uh, the update is installed on device. And WFX change status to installed after the update is applied. And then the loop then reboot uh, to complete process. And finally, the update status is marked as either a success or failed. So this completes the monitoring of the update process. Okay, I'm a legal thing, but so I talk about the when TAF detects their anomalies, it's important to notify the server or user. For remote devices, Notification needed to send via the network. If the device has an external output, or for example, uh, LED or display, uh, one in can display directly on the device. And however, uh, there is an important constellation. So if the communication is tempered with, uh, the integrity of the update process may be at risk. 
So this could undermine the security guaranteed provided by TAF. Uh, it requires careful consideration, I think. So is this demonstration information is transmitted using MQTT. So the reason for this is that it is uh, lightweight and can ensure secure communication through SSL or TLS. Uh, MQTT uh, play two key roles in our update process. First, when the device detecting uh, anomaly be tough, the incidence is reported to the server. And adding, we've implemented the heartbeat function uh, to monitor the device's status. The device uh, periodically sends a heartbeat message allowing the server to monitor the device's online status. Using MQTT ensures secure, efficient, real-time communication for monitoring and responding to security incidents. So in conclusion, uh, in this presentation, device management referred to meaning the information summarized in the table five. UKI and root file system version are updated when an uh, update succeed, as tracked by WFX. And additionally, uh, status and last connection are uh, updated through the connection with MQTT. All this information is stored in the database. In this case, uh, PostgreSQL and ManageBear Fast API. So far, we've covered the key component of uh, the update system. So now let's dive into the actual implementation, focusing on both uh, the server side and device side. So I go over some point that we haven't discussed in the uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, first, uh, device side. So first, let me introduce Suricata. Uh, Suricata is a demo mode of SW update. It pulls a remote server for updating and installs them. Suricata already supports to like this, Hawkbeat, general purpose HTTP, and of course, uh, WFX DAOs workflow is supported. And key feature of Suricata is its extensibility with lost modules. Using the C2 Lua bridges, uh, update logic can be written in Lua 5.4. So we can extend it further to meet our special needs. So now let's look at how we customize the Swicata in practice. So we've developed a customer script to handle key functions like connecting the WFX server integrate with TAF, and implementing heartbeat functionality. An uh, important point to mention here is that WFX can be connected through uh, its API, and this API-based connection is already supported with Suricate. So for the remaining two functions, uh, uh, TAF client and heartbeat, are implemented in Go. TAF client use the Go TAF version 2 library. Yeah. And they are compiled into shared object files for using in Lua script. As shown in code run, so we import the TAF client and heartbeat module in Lua script. So we can use uh, these two features as a library. And I'd talk about the server side information. So last year, uh, we built our metadata server with Python TAF. Python TAF is a reference implementation of TAF. So however, we decided to use a repository service for TAF. We call RS TAF. Our RS TAF implements TAF as a services and providing a simple, scalable, and flexible use of TAF for software updates. And so why we did we chosen RSTF? So one reason is that uh, RSTF is actively maintained and continuously uh, improved. Uh, improved. Additionally, uh, by using RSTF, we can uh, prioritize our, our focusing on our work on the device side. So we use RSTF. Yeah. Yeah. Let me talk about the uh, overview of the server side architecture. 
uh, we have set up two cars too, internal and external, uh, that connect via bot like this. So device connect only to external server, like one, and which ensure secure and isolated communication uh, with internal service. Uh, this setup protects sensitive data and internal process by limiting direct contact. And uh, GUI is integrated with the servers with API, uh, GUI uh, allowing administrator to manage update and devices. Okay. So let's talk about the demonstration. So for the demonstration, so we've set up everything using this CIP tough demo repository uh, tagged as version 0.2.1. So the server uh, environment is managed using Docker Compose. So if you want to know the detail about the service, yeah, you please check the Docker Compose. And the device side is simulated with QMU. So we've also confirmed the set of works on actual hardware, which you can see there, our CIP boost demo next to the, my, this room. So uh, let's move into the demonstration now. Okay, maybe it will maybe work. On the left side of this screen, uh, you can see the device side. And on right, we have the user interface. Uh, starting with the device side, Okay, uh, you can see that OS version is too small. It's 1.0.0. The device is booted from partition A. So can I use the LSPLK command? I can check the partitions, and SD4 corresponds to partition A, and SD5 is correspond to the partition B. Our update will be applied to. Partition B. Now let's move to the right side on screen here. So on this home screen, you can see uh, the device client being managed as well as the images that are available. This is the device information, and this is the uh, artifact images like this. And two step time, uh, I've already registered the devices and images. And now let's click on this device ID, which is example device ID. I click this. And to move to the device management screen. Uh, here you can see the yellow mark. Oh. Like here, here is a yellow mark. So indicate that the device hasn't communicated with the server yet. And the UI also shown that both UKI and root file system version uh, 1.0.0 so now let's proceed with update. Okay, like this, instead. I will enter the necessary command on the device side. And stop. And normally this option, operation, would be handled automatically by a system of the services. But for demonstration, I'll be it manually here. Yeah. And you can see here, okay, here, yeah. Uh, the system indicates the target was not found, uh, target file missing. So we can't detect the update because we don't create the update image. So yeah, of course. And the target was, and the uh, next polling, so this, where is that? Oh, here. Yeah. Uh, sleeping for 45 seconds. So next polling will occur in 45 seconds. During this initial startup and polling, the device uh, status is uh, maybe update. Okay. So a device is uh, sending a heartbeat. So this indicator, yellow indicator, became green. This is uh, function is normally. So yeah, it's a good uh, it point. If the circle is turned red, uh, it means that an issue has been detected. Yeah. This demonstration don't handle this, but yeah, I started. And now let's process with manage actual update. For this demonstration, uh, we will updating everything to version two. I enter the 2.0.0 every part. So uh, there are different room for improvement 
in this way, but select this version. Okay. And oh, whoa, see. sorry, I manage. Sorry. Oh, don't work. Oh, sorry, please wait. And we have a device gun manage. Uh, this device ma and gamma URI have a delta checkpoint. So if this enable, we can use our leaf delta update image. And yeah, and there's a version like this, like this, and check the delta update. And, and the bot will automatically generate the delta update images and upload the delta image to the external artifact server and prepare the metadata. Okay. Oh, sorry. We have some problem with this. Don't worry. Okay. So, sorry, please wait here for I can't control the time. And just update the process, the start and polling and started and status updated. Indicator is turned to green and enter the version like this. And enable and checking the delete point and start task. So I pushing the uh, start button as a WFX job is created. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Okay, please wait. Yes, okay, I created the job. So this uh, center Im information is WFX job status. So this job status uh, status is nude. So this is means that uh, up the update image uploaded to the server and started for detection. So maybe device side takes a new update image, maybe here. Yeah. Maybe it's falling now. Okay, start it. And just status change to the download it. And maybe status change it to installed. It may, oh yeah, change to the installed. So, this install process is finished, so the devices need to reboot. So I enter the reboot process. Uh, this is maybe uh, automatically, but yeah, for the demonstration purpose, I enter manually. And the booting system. Okay, and log in. And check the version, and yeah, I'll skip this. And so, yeah, I stop this video, and you can check that uh, this uh, update is started from partition B. So SD5 is root file system. So yeah, this update is successful, but now, okay. Uh, this is our update, well, our update status is installed. So we need to update success or not. Uh, in real case scenario, uh, the test run after the rebooting, but in this demonstration, we don't have a test. So yeah, manually update the status like this. Maybe this job is disappeared. Yeah, disappeared and refreshing the page. And the OS version, like update version 2.0.0, like this. And job logs check their status is success. OK. This is demonstration. Uh, it's hard. And we've successfully demonstrated the combination of SW update, TAF, RDIF, and device management functions. In terms of flexibility, the CIP TAF demo is designed to be easily replaced uh, existing services and feature commonly used in their products. Honestly. And looking Looking ahead, uh, further investigation into additional existing services and potential improvement will have 
we find this solution in real world scenario. Uh, if you are interested in CAP's activities or uh, this demonstration, so please feel, feel free to visit our booth. Okay, let's take a look at where we handling in terms of device management. The demo is running, but it is still an early stages. So with room for improve, improvement. We will evaluate the overall structure for device management, including based use of WFX and custom solutions. Additionally, we we'll look into existing services to enhance functionality and integra integration. We will continue to investigate and address challenges in devices uh, management, device management, to make the system better and more reliable over time. I'll talk about tough client. So currently, there is no stable, widely adopted implementation of TAF client on the device side. This is important gap we need to address a strong TAF client is essential for such device updates. Our primary goal is to develop a TAF client, especially for embedded devices. We to plan to embed this tough client as a binary within SW applet. On the server side, RS tough will serve as our reference as metadata server. We will continue uh, exploring the challenges and the solutions for integrating tough with SW applet, working to make the system secure and scalable as we move forward. Thank you. About it from me. Yeah. Thank you. Do you have any question? Okay. Are you in your demo? You are using AB update with Delta update. Yeah. So the first Delta uh, in your demo, first Delta is. Uh, Fused to the B partition. Yeah. Uh, when the A partition is synced or the its next time update. So the second yeah. delta. When yeah, when yeah. you have second delta. Yeah. Uh, the you assume the B partition update or A partition update from the two jump. Uh, yeah. Uh, first uh, first image is uh, fro uh, started from partition A and. Apply to partition B. B is a root file system and not change the root file system. And next update is applied to partition A. And next is applied to B. Yeah. We so you mean change. the ping pong? Ping pong, yeah, right. Yeah. Ping pong. Day. But the problem is the when you think about delta update, yeah. the A partition is version zero. Yeah. B partition is version one. Yeah. The next version two is yeah. updated to the partition A, so it needs to the, from the zero to two. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. One jump, one more jump is required. Ah, uh, when we we make a created the delta applet images, uh, we need to compare with version zero and version two. So we need to compare this. Yeah, it, yeah. But in this scenario, we don't think about this turning point. Yeah, mm -hmm. we need to think partition B to partition A. Yeah. You have guessed, yeah. Yes. So, and one more thing is it uh, just based on my experience in the industry. Yeah. Uh, the delta update is very, very, very good yeah. for the customer. Yeah. The problem is the the supplier. Yeah. Needed to check if we have ten delta update. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to test. From zero to one, mm. we have it, it's it's a, a little bit very. Uh, exponential problem of the test cost. Yeah, yes, yes. So it was very complex problem uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. in the in the, in the in my experience. Yes, yes, so, yeah. uh, frankly speaking, at that time, the I limited the yeah. Delta update uh, in, during only three or four times, yeah, yeah. and then full update kind of to reduce the cost oh, yeah. of the test. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. So the uh, I think the. Uh, 
considering uh, more scenario yeah, with yeah. the cost problem, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's valuable to, I think. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So we don't considering about this point. Yeah, thank you for a suggestion. Yeah, we need to continue to discuss about this point. Yeah, thank you. Do you have a, okay? Okay, okay, thank you. <laughs>